Hello people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. Today we're going to be talking about how you can start off a realistic career mode with the likes of Ajax, of course, European Giants. And one thing I will say, maybe you can try and low-key build a team that can help Ajax win another Champions League. Uh, it's, it's been an incredibly long time since we've seen a, a team like Ajax win the, the, the Champions League. Of course, it's so dominated with finances and, you know, superstar teams. What happened to the good old-fashioned days of building a team constructed mainly of youth players, of talented youth players, and seeing how far you can get. Of course, Ajax almost got to that point in, in what was it, 2018-2019 season, under the likes of Eric Ten Hag. They almost did it. They were so close to the promised land, but it just it wasn't to be. So maybe that could be one of your potential goals for a career mode like this. But mainly in videos like this, I just show you guys how you can start it off. More or less, some transfer targets that are linked with the particular clubs in real life, as well as some players who you should maybe look to get rid of in the different squads. Of course, with a team like Ajax, they are well known for their youth academy. So we will be talking about the youth academy where you should potentially look to try and scout in certain countries and who you should look to try and bring in. Of course, it's a shameless plug moment, but if you guys would like and you haven't seen it yet, I think the best way to, you know, add that little bit extra into a realistic career mode is obviously implementing the realistic tactics. Now, last week we went ahead, we made the realistic Ajax tactics. So if you haven't seen that video, please, I'll link it at the end of this one. Go check it out, implement it into your realistic Ajax career mode, and you'll see it'll make the world a different place. That doesn't even make sense. But anyway, go check it out. So, taking a look at this Ajax team now, of course, they've got the very old 39-year-old, damn near almost 40, Pasvia. Obviously, the, the, the replacement for the likes of Andre Onano a few seasons ago, he's done very well. But then they also went ahead and brought in the likes of Rudy, uh, the Argentinian 31-year-old man, 80 overall, quite good goalkeeper, I will say that. But I, I think they've also brought in this man. I think they brought him in from, it was a club in Germany, I'm pretty sure. It may have been Frankfurt, I'm not too sure. But again, I think in terms of your goalkeeping options, you've got four really good goalkeepers here, 23 years of age, 21, of course, 31, and then oh, damn near 40. But I, I think if you can develop maybe the likes of Gorta or... Uh, I think it's Ramaj, I, I don't know, um, but if you maybe could, you know, try and grow one of these players into being the, the natural number one, I think you would be set for, for a really good, strong, solid base and, and a building block for your team. Of course, Ajax are very much into developing players that don't really, like, buy already made talents. I mean, really was quite a stretch, but they ended up bringing in an already made, like, number one goalkeeper. So... Maybe having him as your number one for the first season or two and then looking to move him on and then having the likes of a Gorta or maybe this man right here as your natural replacement could work out quite well. Another player that they recently bought in, uh, which I was quite shocked with because I really liked Sosa last season at uh, Stuttgart. I think he's a very good, solid 25, of course. Um, the natural replacement for this man right here, Windell. Now, he he was brought in with a whole host of potential and hype, and he never really fulfilled his hype or potential last season. So, naturally, Ajax looked to get him out the door. They loaned him out for this season. I don't know if they're going to look to try and bring him back. If you are an Ajax fan, let me know down below. Would you want the likes of Owen Windell back in your side, or do you want to potentially try and sell him? I would look to try and sell him just based off of what I've heard and what I've seen a lot of Ajax fans that I know of. Um, they don't... They don't really get on with him. They, they think that, you know, he's got a whole host of potential and he's really good, but he hasn't really fulfilled that. He doesn't have the work ethic in order to, you know, meet those requirements. So maybe looking to shift him out the door and bringing in a natural replacement could potentially be an option. Or potentially, potentially, you would like to develop one of these players, the likes of Marta or maybe even the likes of Sela Edin. They could potentially be the natural replacements. And, and I mean, at 64 and 67... Um, overall, respectively, I don't think that they're too bad. I think, you know, they could be, maybe make that next step into being a, a, a starter or a, a good rotational bench piece. As for your defenders now, or your central defenders, we've got the likes of Avila. I think he was also brought in recently. Medic, all of these are new signings. Sotulo, um, look, I think Sotulo specifically, I think you could get a lot of money for him. And it's, it's not... A far-fetched thing that Ajax bring in a, a player with this much quality. They use him for a season, two seasons, maybe even three seasons. But they build up um, the hype around him in Europe. And then they sell him on for a massive, massive fee. And that is more or less what you're trying to go with for an Ajax side. You're trying to, you know, develop good players, young players, sell them on for massive fees, reinvest it back into the team. So eventually you'll have an absolute billion and a half to spend. 
But that's not really the Ajax way. That you're not going to, you know, be buying the likes of Kylian Mbappe in season seven. You want to, you know, have a sustainable model for the club. And more or less, players like Satulo, they stop off at Ajax for for what two, three years of their career, and then they get sold on for massive amounts of money because Ajax tend to do things like that. The likes of Jarrell Hatter, of course taking the captain's armband numerous times this season, 17 years of age. I would look to try and build a team around him for at least three to four seasons. And then again, if those big clubs in Europe come looking, come knocking on the door, maybe you look to try and offload him for a massive, massive fee. I'm talking like Frankie de Jong, Matthias de Ligt type, type uh, massive fees here. So make sure you, you, you don't get screwed over. Make sure you're screwing over the Arsenals, the Man Uniteds, the, the Juventuses, the Barcelonas. Make sure that you can get as much money from those massive financial juggernauts as you possibly can. Uh, moving on though, we've got other players in and around here. Another player that also really didn't work out and fulfill his potential last season, although he does have a real face, is the likes of Jorge Sanchez, obviously also out on loan. Again, if you are an Ajax fan, would you want to sell him next season when he comes back? Or would you look to, you know, reincorporate him back into the team? I know the likes of Wrench has been very solid. I wish he had a real face because Wrench is a very good potential career mode player to, to go after. Um, but he can play as a right back, a sense back, or even a left back. I know he has been playing as a sense back of late. Um, but I think, you know what, a across the back line, I think he's a very good, adequate fit. Um, and then we've got some solid backups uh, or a solid backup, I should say. I'm not going to try and pronounce his name because I'm probably going to butcher it. But again, you can look to develop him, grow him, and then potentially sell him on for a much bigger fee later on. Into your midfield now. We've got the likes of Tahirovic as well as some of his backups. I like I like this kid right here, um, Voss. Uh, I think he should technically be the starter in this, in this side. Uh, that's just my opinion from what I've seen of him. I think he's got a lot of talent and potentially could fetch a massive fee in the next two years or so. Um... Progressing on into the midfield now, we've got the likes of Van den Boomen, um, Kenneth Taylor, um, and this man right here, he's Icelandic, I think it's Hil Hillinson, I would convert him more so into a central midfielder, having him be a rotational piece, and of course, the likes of Ajax also went ahead and signed Jordan Henderson, so that's another player that you can factor in to the rotation, because essentially they are somewhat light in the, the number 8 department, they've got two, maybe three actual players that can play in those positions, so... Looking to, um, and if you include Henderson, it's four. But looking to maybe sign one or two number eights is probably not a bad strategy to go with. Or maybe even looking for one or two number eights from Youth Academy. Um, we've got this man right here. Um, I I heard only good things about him. And it's a bit weird and a bit worrying that Ajax loaned him out to the likes of Porto. So do, do we see him come back? Do we see him leave? Do we see him come back for a season or two, do really well, and then get sold? It's, it's, it's a mystery because I, I I I heard really, really good things about him. So it's a bit weird if you ask me personally. He can't play as a, as a right midfielder or a left wing. Um, I think it's pronounced Concisao. I, I don't know. If, if it's correct, you, that's a gold star right there. Um, but moving on though, into your forward line, we've got the likes of Bergvine. Of course, the captain, 25 years of age. You can also look to build a team around him. He could be the natural Dusan Tadic type replacements play. Of course, Dusan Tadic also left in the summer. The natural replacement for him was Steven Bergvine. But again, I think you could... He didn't have the best career in the Premier League with Spurs, so you could look to try and resurrect his career, have him, you know, lead your team to glory. Countless Air Divisi titles, countless, you know, Champions League run-ins. Uh, run try and, you know, progress as high as you can to, to maybe one day lifting it for um, Ajax itself. As for the other players in and around him, this kid right here, Van Axel Don Dongen, Dongen, I don't know, um, has a massive potential in, in EEA FC 24. I know this. It's a pity he doesn't have a real face, but I think he can get away with it. Again, I'm super hyped about this kid. I want to see what he can do for the future. I know a lot of Ajax fans are also very hyped around his potential. So maybe if you do shift the likes of Bergwijn out the door at a later stage, you can then look to try and hype this kid up a lot more, build him, grow his potential, and then maybe he can be the, the guy that leads your team Ajax to the promised lands. As for the likes of Berghaze, the, the natural number 10 type replacement of uh, Hakim Ziyech a few seasons ago. Look, he can play as a central midfielder, a central attacking midfielder, and of course a right winger. And then we've got this man right here, Carlos Forbes, a natural replacement for Berghaze. Now I heard, I'm not, I haven't actually, I should have researched this. But I heard that he was going to Nottingham Forest. I don't know how true that is, though. I hope it's not true, because he's recently just signed for Ajax from Manchester City. He's got a load of pace. He's got a load of potential. 
I think he could work out very, very well, especially with the likes of Concisa on the on the right or the left hand side. You can alternate the wingers when he does come back from his load. I think you've got a really good duo here. Um, that is obviously Portuguese. That obviously has some really high talents. So it's a bit of a weird one. Now I'm, I might have just you know read the wrong thing or you know misunderstood, but I. I heard that he was going to Nottingham Forest. Now, that's a bit weird, if you ask me. Of course, another new signing, we got Chuba Akpom. At least he's got a real face, I will say that. Um, also, a, a very good rotational piece. Can play as that's number 10. Can play as a striker up front, alongside the likes of Brian Brobby. 21, linked with a move to Manchester United and a whole host of other clubs. 77 overall is a, a massive piece to the success of this Ajax side. So again, try and build around him for a season or two. And then if a massive offer comes in, I'm talking 50, 60, 70 million euros, then you accept it. But until then, maybe not so much. Try and build the team around him. Try and grow his overall and try and have him lead your team to the success. The promised lands. Now, of course, I really highly rate what Ajax do with their scouting systems. They don't have a whole host of different scouts. They have a, a, a singular small amount and they rely on those scouts and those scouts deliver time and time out. So some scouting instructions that you could choose to give your scouts. They do tend to try and, you know, find that young talent early on, whether it's from clubs who have already signed, you know, pro deals and they try and sign them on a cheaper rate. So I would suggest you your one set of instructions should be 16 to 21 years of age. The contract length doesn't overly matter too much. There should be either a first team quality player, a first team prospect, or a world class prospect. One of those in between that can come into the squad. And again, because Ajax don't have these superstar type players, they develop them, they grow them. So therefore, if you sign young players, you should be able to give them game time as much as possible. Another thing Ajax tend to do is also sign these older players either in the final years or final months of their deals or as free agents. So I've also gone ahead and scouted. 31 to 35 years of age and in the final 12 months of their deals. They should be first in quality, naturally. As for the defensive midfield, of course, you've got Zaharovic and a few others, Voss as well. Um, but it's not like a mainstay position. Maybe you can convert Voss into a central midfielder. That way you can then go ahead and sign a DM, a natural DM to replace the likes of Zaharovic. So that's why I've also gone with first team quality or potentially backup option for the defensive midfielder position. 16 to 30 years of age and then the contract length doesn't overly matter too much. As for the left back department, you've got Sosa and one or two others. But I would say looking for another one, looking for another young player to come in and challenge Sosa on that left hand side, challenge him for that starting role. So 22 to 26 years of age, first team quality or a potential back. Now just uh, another little aspect to their scouting department. Now naturally you start off with four scouts, one being scouting in the Netherlands, the other being scouting in, in Belgium as well as England. And then I've gone ahead and also told the scouts, oh, I've, I've sent scouts out. I've sent them to uh, Portugal because obviously there is quite a lot of young talents in and around Portugal. And if you would like to hire another one, I would probably say go ahead and send him to Italy with a lot of, ho uh, of new generated um, star heads being added to the Italian league. There are quite a few young players that you can naturally look to try and, you know, sweep up and bring into your Ajax side. And then finally, we will talk about some of the transfers that you could potentially look to make. Now, we've got the likes of Donny van der Beek currently at Manchester United, but out on loan at the likes of, I think it's Frankfurt or it could be the other one, but I'm pretty sure it's Frankfurt. Currently out on loan, his, his Man United career has not worked out. He's gone a very much downhill since. And to be honest, in the start of season number two, he'll then go back to Manchester United and be in the final 12 months of his deal. Why not bring him back? Why not have him as, a, as an extra option off the bench or maybe as a starter? He could be a, a, a slightly older player that can come into the team and provide a lot of you know knowledge to the, the younger players. And that's something that I have quite happily done in the past. They've sold certain players, the likes of David Clarsen. I remember a few years ago, they sold him to Everton. Didn't really work out at Everton. They brought him back. The same thing. You could have almost the identical storyline with the likes of a Donny van der Beek. Another player that I've put on the list that I would think would be absolutely incredible. Currently out on loan in the first season, though, out on loan at Atalanta. Is 22 years of age, can play as either an attacking midfielder or as a striker. He's six foot four, left footed, has some fantastic play styles and such fast and flair player. Charles de Ketelet, one of my favorite players. I'm sad he doesn't have a real face either, to be fair, but I think it, that, that, that doesn't really matter. He's a very good striker. He reminds me of an Ajax type mold striker where he doesn't always have to have the ball to be effective, if that makes sense. He, he's very good at, you know, drifting into those little half spaces, being almost a number 10 playing up front in certain moments. And of course, he is six foot four, so physical units of a man with some technical skills that can go a very long way in helping your team succeed. Another player that I, I don't know about this too much because 
yes, they have been linked, and you know, Ajax are very in tune with signing young players like the likes of Antonio Nusa. But I've also heard that Spurs are, are are sniffing around or in and around the deal. By the time that this video goes out, who knows? Spurs may have signed him, and I just look like an idiot. But I don't think it's so far fetched to think that the likes of Antonio Nusa could be a new signing for the likes of Ajax. As for the likes of Jordan Henderson, of course, this is a hand and glove fit. He's already signed for them, but I would advise you go ahead and sign him for your career mode. So moving on to the Youth Academy. Now, you will also notice I am in different clothing. That is because the other day whilst recording, I simply forgot to talk about the youth system that Ajax currently have, which doesn't make sense. And you can't leave it out because Ajax are well known for their youth scouting, their development of talents, and you can't really leave that out. So for the two countries I've gone ahead and selected is obviously number one, the Netherlands looking for that Dutch good talent, as well as Brazil recently setting up, you know, scouting networks in South America. You can alternate between Brazil and Argentina and so on, but they have been known to find that good young talent. So there you have it, people. That is how I would start off a realistic IX career mode. Of course, as always, if you do enjoy videos like this and you enjoyed this one, hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you later.